What's going on everyone? Good morning. I'm Brian Weber and I wanted to make this video for you guys really quick before I get back to trading, get on with my day. So I'm, I'm doing this thing called a small account challenge where I'm taking $3,000, I'm trading futures and I'm growing it, you know, showing, I want to demonstrate that just with $3,000 you can, you can still trade and make decent money while also growing the account to into something larger so you can actually trade with a bigger position size, you know, grow your equity, you know, and eventually have a, a sizable account to trade with uh, as a professional, you know, to do this for a living. So first I want to say like uh, you got to have realistic expectations when you're trading with a small amount of money, you can't expect to make a lot of money. You know, um, if you're trading with $3,000, you really can't be risking more than, in my opinion, more than $200, $250 on a trade. Um, but that's, I'm going to go into a little bit about my trading plan just so you guys can have an idea of how I'm approaching this. But, you know, small wins add up over time as long as you have a good strategy that's consistent and, you know, you have a high win rate. You, ma you manage your, your risk, which is the, the biggest factor in determining whether or not someone can actually grow an account with a small amount of capital such as $3,000. You can do this with options, but in my opinion it's a little bit harder just the way options move because futures, I mean, you can make one tick on futures and you can already make like, you know, eight bucks, nine dollars with, with AMP, you know, per contract. So it's just a little bit easier in that aspect. But the big things are going to be having realistic expectations, managing your risk, most importantly, and managing yourself. You know, like how, how do you take a loss? Do you have a trading plan? Are you able to walk away and take a break when you say you're supposed to? And this is the biggest problem that I have with trading that I'm continuing to work on, that I know I do it, and I know that I have to take certain steps once I sense that that problem is coming on again. Um, to avoid, you know, another bigger loss, breaking your plan, you know. So I'll cover those a little bit of those things and how I, how I put it into a, a document and the trading plan that I use. So going to be using AMP as the broker because of the low commissions and the the low day trading margins. You, it's only four hundred dollars per contract on ES. It's a little bit more on NQ and, and crude oil CL. So you can only trade one contract on NQ and CL at a time with $3,000. And you can trade up to, I mean, I'm not allowing myself to trade more than two contracts on ES. And the I'll cover like the max loss, what's the risk for each, each of those trades and when I'm allowed to do that. Um, but let's jump into the document that I have really quick and I'll cover my trading plan so you guys can kind of see how I'm approaching this and then you know, as as I progress in this, I will I'll create some videos of me live trading and like progress updates of how it's actually going, and share with you guys the lesson learns and how you can kind of replicate what I'm doing, so you can approach if you want to trade and you don't have a lot of money, you could also do something similar that I'm doing. You know, I have a lot more money to use, but it's a challenge to myself to use three thousand dollars because it's not how much money you have that's going to make you a good trader. It's how you actually trade with the money you have. Like, are you able to manage the risk properly? Because if, if you don't do it with a small account, your losses will only be bigger when you use a bigger account. So let's jump into the document really quick. All right, guys. So really quick, I want to go through the trading plan that I created. I got my Google Docs up. And I'll go through that really quick and then also show you another important part of being successful at trading is recording your trading and analyzing how you're doing. So I have a spreadsheet over here that I track all my trades and you know the equity, why I took the trade, what was the result, what should I have done differently, you know, stuff like that. So let's take a look at my trading plan. Um, so the general trading rules that I have, uh, first let's start with what I wrote here. The reason for these trading rules is to prevent myself from being my own worst enemy. In other words, let my emotions do the trading instead of trading on pure logic. So the, like I was saying before, the, big, the biggest mistakes that I've had with trading 
is not abiding by the max loss for the day. Um, revenge trading is another one. I actually don't have it in here, but that's when you get you get taken out for a loss because your stop was hit, and then you enter right back in because you feel like you were right, only to see that the market. The reason why you had to stop there is because to protect, you know, your account, manage the risk, and it doesn't work. But as soon as you enter the trade, typically I've done in the past where you add an extra contract, you automatically are losing as soon as you enter the trade, and it just digs the hole deeper, and then it takes like an extra day to make that money back. And mentally, it's probably worse off than the actual money that you lost. And uh, having patience too, not waiting for your setup. So when you say you're going to enter a trade, here don't enter it early don't enter it late if it doesn't fill you uh, move on to the next trade you know you can there's always two type two trades in the day you know that you can either go long you can go short you know so there's if you miss one trade then look to the other side and see what you can do so the general trading rules that i have in this account i'm not allowing myself to lose more than 250 dollars uh, per day and the maximum loss per trade is $150 per uh, is with one contract. This is per trade, and then max loss with two contracts is $250, which is the max allowable loss for that day. And if any of if this is hit, this number right here, then I'm closing my screen and walking away. Um, so the maximum trailing drawdown that I'm giving myself to, I'm giving myself a cushion of $1,500. So if I lose 50% of the account, I'm going to take a two-week break and then reanalyze what I did wrong, what I need to change. And more than likely I have to refund the account, the $1,500 to continue because it's going to be really hard to trade with just $1,500. It's possible, but it makes it even more difficult. So maximum position size, we're going to do one or two lots as long as the equity is under $5,000. If it's above 5,000 up to 10,000, I can use three. And every $5,000 increment, pretty much adding another lot that I'm allowed to use. And then I'll adjust this max loss based on the equity allowed. Probably, you know, add 50 bucks, 50 or $100, depending on, you know, where I am in, in this range. So a big one is not trading one minute before and after certain economic releases. And typical releases that I'm referring to are the GDP. The, the GDP, the jobs numbers, like unemployment, unemployment rate, and then the FOMC data that comes out, and then crude oil inventories if you're trading crude oil. So those those events, typically the market gets really whippy, and the volatility, it's due to the volatility increasing um, based on, it's mostly trading bots trading, and, and the price becomes whippy, so it's not advisable to enter a trade before that happens. Maybe have a trade set up on the other end of the range, up uh, below or above, based on you know your analysis to get wicked in. That's usually how I play that. Um, so the maximal maximum allowable trades per day. So I give myself ten trades or a daily loss of two hundred fifty dollars. I really don't think over trading is such a thing as how many trades you take more as, you know, over trading is you keep digging yourself a deeper hole. You know, if your trades aren't working and you keep trading, that would be over trading to me. But if you keep trading, you have like 20 trades, but they're almost all winners. That's not over trading to me because you're, you, you're, you're in the zone and it's working for you that day. So just keep on trading. Um, but have like a like a max profit that you're willing to to walk away with if you if you have a loser. So let's see here. Like I was saying, no more trading after max loss. When I'm allowed to trade, pre regular and post market hours. Uh, I typically try to wait 30 minutes after the market opens, because around 7:15, 7:30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, the market likes to pick a direction either a reverse from the direction it's it was going or it will continue in that direction but the market open can be or leading up to the market open can provide some decent trading setups where you can have one trade and you're done for the day so uh, there's just some things that i look for you know trade in the direction of the trend off support or resistance if there's a gap and go it depends you know what the if we're gapping up gapping down what was the candle before that day 
uh, and, and recognize candle patterns, you know, or you can place your stop for low risk trades. Um, and then the after after market closes, the volume is typically low. But when the Asian markets open, the Tokyo Stock Exchange and Hong Kong Stock Exchange. So we have Japan and China opening up 5 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. my time. That's when the volume typically starts picking up and you'll you'll see some more action in the futures markets. So I'll take it. I'll look to take a trade around then. And then throughout the night, typically into the European Open, if there's any economic data, it's almost around midnight my time. So this is a big one right here. After a losing trade, you must take a 15-minute break. If you don't have sufficient margin left, then to avoid hitting max day loss, then you're done for the day. This is the, a really big one that can prevent you from over trading and digging yourself a huge hole that you know if you break if you break the rule or you exceed your max loss it just takes more time to make it back and not even just to make the money back it takes it takes time to get your mind right to to get back in the zone where you're you're ready to trade again so that that alone just being okay with losing and being like, okay I'm done for the day nothing it didn't work today so let me let me move on I can wait I can start trading once the market reopens for the next day, you know, after 3 p.m. my time. So this is something I noticed too. Uh, this is another rule that I have. Oop, let me undo that. On a day where an announcement by the president or FOMC is expected before the announcement trade the range between support and resistance levels, other, uh, also known as FIBs and trend lines. Um, so I've noticed it's like a pattern. Typically the market likes to go towards flat, so if we're above the open, it likes to go towards the open. If we're below the open, it likes to go back up. So bearish and bullish plays respectively. So like I was saying right here, price action acts like a rubber band between them leading up into that data, data release or a speech because people aren't sure what's going to happen. So keep the market even, keep it flat. And then once, once the things get going, price will start moving in the direction based on people's reaction to it. Um, I don't really want to go into too much of the time frames and indicators because it's not like you can trade all this stuff, but the most important is managing your risk and more of the fundamental parts of things. You can have any, you can use any indicator, any time frame, and you'll, you'll be able to make money as long as you can follow the general rules of your trading plan. But more or less, I like to scalp. I'll use I'll use these time frames, but sometimes I'll trend trade too. I'll scalp up or down into the trend. Um, so I do want to cover really quick three-step process on how I enter a trade. I try to stick by this as much as possible, but I adjust based on what the market's doing because you always have to do that. This is just general guidelines. So. Um, Entry and initial stop and target. What should I do when I'm entering? Okay, so for entry and initial stop and target, these these are my general rules. So a trade should only be taken when price hits a Fibonacci level. DMI skid line, which is a momentum, it's a pivot point, trend line or TD bull target, which is just the opening range target from high to low. It's a Fib extension. I always use OCO orders, my stop and my target are already defined. I'll move the target based on what the market's doing, but I don't move the stop, keep it there. And um, the stop is placed on the risk management plan above. This kind of has to update. I didn't change that from a previous plan because I copy and pasted this. So there's the risk management plan. Um, typically, these are the types of stops that I use in less volatile markets plus or minus eight ticks from the entry, medium volatile markets. So you could say like VIX less than 15, and this would be VIX greater than 15 and VIX and less than 20. And you have, to, I mean, on highly volatile markets, that's above 20.
this would be less than or equal to. So highly volatile markets, I want to use this 16 ticks will be about four points. So I would say four to five points is a good, you shouldn't use any more stop than that on a, on a high volatile market. You should just have a better entry. You know, you don't want to risk 10 points, $500 to make half of that. So you just got to wait. If, the, if it's too volatile, you just can't trade. So the target, I always like to look for a one, one to one risk reward ratio because my my win rate is about 75 80 percent so i can do that and still make decent money you know because my win rate's so high if i risk 100 bucks and make 100 bucks in the end i'm always going to make money as long as i keep my risk my max my max loss limited like i said singles and doubles add up so i even have a trade management plan as well and this is actually where the biggest, the most work actually happens as a trader. Entering the trade, finding the trade, entering it is, is the easy part. You know, maybe some people have find it hard to, hard to actually hit the button because of fear, but I don't have that problem. The problem can be sometimes, how do you manage a trade? When do you move the stop? Where, is your, where should your target actually be? You know, you want to make this much, but the market's only giving you this much or vice versa. You know, like you have to just, you have to balance those two, two things. So I actually find it's, it's very helpful to start a timer about seven minutes. It could be different for you based on your time frame. So to give yourself some room, you know, walk away let the timer go off to come back and see what the market's doing. That depends if the market's moving slow, if it's moving fast, then if it's moving fast, you kind of want to be in front of the trip in front of the screen to get in and out of a trade. You know, when the volatility picks up, it can move market can move four five, 10 points really fast. So I usually aim, usually aim to make at least a hundred dollars per contract. Um, and then this is just stop movement. You know, nothing, nothing fancy here, but try to give it some time. I usually like to move this, the stop if the trade's working based on the, the tick chart or the five minute chart, you know, find if I'm bullish, I'll put, if, if it starts working and I don't get stopped out, I'll move, I'll move the trade, move the stop up underneath the most recent bearish candle, so a red candle. And if I'm bearish, I'll move the stop above the most recent bullish candle, either on the tick chart, excuse me, the tick, the, I use the 1024 tick chart or the five minute chart just to lower the risk and lock in some, some profit if, if it's allowing it, allowing uh, any profit in the trade. And I never move the stop if it's a trade moves against you. I just let it work out. If I get stopped out, I get stopped out. If the trade is flat and isn't doing anything, you know, for up to 14 minutes, seven, 14 minutes, I'll look to just move my stop up to cut the risk down, up or down, depending on if I'm, if I'm long or short. And if it's really not doing anything, I'll just consider getting out of the trade and just waiting and finding a new trade. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover. There, there's some time frames here that I, I'll mention. I could probably create another video and also trading strategies. I don't want to make this video too long, but this is pretty much covers my plan, my risk management plan, and how I plan to approach growing a $3,000 account. Let's take a look really quick at this journal that I have. This is really going to be helpful. So I actually will record almost everything about about the, you know, when I took the trade, I'll probably add a column here for the time, the ticker, the entry stop and all this stuff to record. And I, the biggest part about this is not how much money you're making from each trade is, but the comments over here is, so take a screenshot and write why, why I took this trade. So I can refer to it later to see, you know, what trades actually work. What should I keep doing? to make that keeps making money, you know, and typically I find in the past when I've done this is 
the trades that I lose on, I look at the chart, the screenshot, and I'm like, why the heck did I go? Why did I enter there? That made no sense. And it, it was most likely because of ants being antsy or entering the trade too early or too late or chasing or something like that. So it's really important to journal, journal your trading. So th this, I'm going to make more videos to update you guys on the progress, but look out for that on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, click my logo or my face popping up now. And I will, I'm, I'm really excited to share this, this journey and this progress with you. And hopefully it will help you guys to trade with a small account and see how you can actually trade futures and make some money. So hope you guys have a good rest of the day. I'll talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.